Today marks the start of Black History Month. The theme for this year's celebration of African American history is Black Health and Wellness. Now, the Association for the Study of African American Life and History chose the theme to acknowledge the legacy of black scholars and medical practitioners and to foster good health and wellness initiatives for black Americans. In this age of the COVID pandemic, there is an urgent need to focus on the well-being of black lives. And the future of black communities is dependent upon becoming proactive about health and wellness for men, women, and children. Yet, in the wake of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and other matters like voting rights and police reform, well, various disparities have added a heavy burden on many black Americans, particularly among black men. A California trailblazer is focusing on the strength of black men in America. Dr. Venus Opal Reese is presenting a virtual summit that calls upon black women to help encourage and support black men. The event is called Healing With Him, Black Women Acknowledging, Honoring, and humanizing black men's trauma. Dr. Reese, a Stanford graduate, is the founder of the Black Women Millionaires Live series and Hot Mess Millionaire. She joins us now to discuss her two-day summit to address black men and mental wellness. So, Doctor, it comes up, this uh, virtual summit starts Saturday, if I'm not mistaken, and you are reaching mm -hmm. out to tell black men what? That we love them and we feel their pain. Dr. Venus, uh, I'm in the context of that, it, why the focus on black women as opposed to black men also? Well, I believe fundamentally because black women are the most educated group in North America. We've been self-reflective from practically from elementary school. Black men have been directed into the prison pipeline. They've been directed into sports. They've been directed into any number of different kinds of activities that don't require self-reflectivity. Well, if you, you can't really tend to your emotional well-being if you don't look within. So because black women, we have had the, the opportunity to look within because we've been in school, because we study, because of our gender, really, I'm proposing that we can actually grant them an energetic emotional space that allows them the safety to be vulnerable. And I fundamentally believe that the only time a black man can be self-reflective is when he's in jail. I'm not okay with that. Neither am I, and I agree with you 100%. Uh, I'm not okay with the, the prison pipeline. That should not be our rights to passage as a black man. It should be that we get an education or that we develop a trade and go on to show that we can live within the American dream and beyond that dream. Having said that, mm -hmm. you made an apology to black men. Uh, what was in that apology and what motivated you to do that? Oh, well, what motivated me to apologize to black men was George Floyd. When George Floyd was executed, in front of the world, and his executioner, executioner looked the camera in his eye with no remorse. And there were people standing around, there were police standing around, and nobody fought for this man. Now, I'm clear about the circumstances, but it let me see something that I had not experienced, which is black men don't have advocates. They're always the criminal. They're always the scapegoat for everything that America has failed at. And I could see that I had positioned black men the same way the cops had, as, some, as a threat, as something to avoid, as something to, to question. And when I realized that, I saw that I had privileged my pain as a black woman over his. And so that's why I apologized. I started doing the research. I started studying white supremacy. I turned all my marketing platforms over to social justice in service of police reform. And that, I, mean, I literally turned off a $5 million machine just to make sure we got educated. So I went back to my Stanford books and I, <laughs> I, started, I started educating the masses about the plight of black men and how black women don't always have um, compassion for their lived experience because we've been hurt by them.
Mm. How do you look at this younger generation? And I say this knowing that Darnella Frazier was the young woman, barely even a woman actually, uh, when this happened. And she took the video that the rest of the world saw. And I think about those of us who are raising young black boys. So is this younger generation better equipped with the language about how to allow space for black men to be vulnerable? I don't think so. If you look at, if you think about it, if you think about Will Smith, when he was vulnerable with um, his wife, when she was talking about being entangled, we turned his tears into a meme. You understand? If we look at it, we'll see that whenever black men are vulnerable, they get ridiculed, they get penalized. So while we may say that we're inclusive and we're humanizing black men, whenever a black man shows what we call a weakness, he gets pounced. And, and, and sometimes it happens with black women. We pounce. I'm not, and, I, and that's a survival strategy. That's not a slam. We learned how to be strong. And being strong has made us successful, but it has made us not successful in our relationships with our sons, with our uncles, with our fathers, with our lovers and our friends. Because if you're always strong, you don't make room for him to be weak. So I'm not proposing that black men haven't done bad things. They have, but so have we. And we did it out of survival because we are raising an oppressive society that's seven generations deep. And until we contend to healing with each other, a black woman cannot heal a black man. That's between him and God, that's a choice. But we can heal with him by taking on our wounds so we don't react to his. And in doing that, uh, there, there's reconciliation between the black mm -hmm. man and black woman, which could build about, mm -hmm. build up, uh, I would like to say, restoration and then a transformation mm -hmm of how mm. we view each other and appreciate each other. I like your words. Restoration, transformation, appreciation. I'm here for it. Absolutely. I think that what we don't account for is the historical wound of cultural trauma from chattel slavery. I think about eugenics. I think about how we're able to um, transfer diabetes. Maybe we can transfer behaviors through our DNA. But fundamentally, the broken trust between black men and black women happened Historically, it is not a character flaw. It is a survival strategy, and we need to take it on together. Dr. Venus Opal Reese giving us something very provocative to think about and internalize. Thank you for joining us tonight. And let's turn now to.